Okay, so let's talk about probably my most favorite thing that we can do with the, uh, if that's a, a proper way to say that, uh, that we can use the a virtual MIDI driver to do. Um, one of the most important things to kind of unlock the ability to have freedom and flexibility is to make sure our set has locators throughout it, right? So we obviously right now, we have locators for each of our songs, so I can toggle through using my keyboard, right? One, two, three, four, and I can get between my songs. Um, but one of the things that really makes, for instance, the repeat uh, trick here that we have work is we have to have locators. Now, one of the bummers with using Ableton Live, um, at least currently, every time they create an update, I check to see if they've updated this, this process or not, is when I drag songs between sets, my locators do not come with them. That's okay though, because we create this markers track and that's how we kind of what we use to, um, to know which section is which, right? We're using this markers track to know kind of what section is, is what, um, and that works perfectly fine instead of having a locator there. But again, in order to use like this repeat track, it needs to repeat back to a locator. So what we end up doing is we go through our, our set and we manually end up adding locators. So you build your set and then you add locators. Now, sometimes people go through and they go and rename these as well too. That's one of the things I always tell people is save yourself some time instead of renaming your locators, just use your markers track here. Like that's, that's, got the name in it so there's no need to rename it um, and so that's going to save you some time in that process but still having to go through and manually add all those locators is going to take forever i'm sorry but it's just going to take a while especially the bigger your set gets so one of my favorite things to do is use the isc driver or virtual midi driver if you're uh, on a pc loop beat you one whatever it is to add clips to our songs so that live can automatically add locators to the set here's what i mean by that so if we go back to song one here You'll see I now have add locator uh, cues and clips that I've added throughout my song. So essentially what I did is everywhere there is a song section where I need a locator, I've added this mini clip that says add locator. Again, because you've got the advanced range of view template because we did the work up front. And actually for this particular one, you have to do no work whatsoever. Um, it's already pre-mapped and ready to go is basically this add locator button is mapped up here to this set button. Okay, so the set button here, uh, basically I could go anywhere. For example, if I go here and I click set, that's gonna add a locator. So what we're doing is we're using this MIDI clip to trigger this set button, which is then going to place locators where we want it. So there's two ways we can do this. We build our set, and, and I should mention, I, I'm doing this slightly out of order, or maybe it feels out of order because this really is a song programming thing, but I wanted to save it for this section uh, building a set section because I think this is where it's easiest to understand. It doesn't make sense to really talk about that when we're talking about formatting songs because uh, we have locators there. Why do we need to add a clip to tell us where to add a locator? But what I should mention is I added these clips to the set after the set was built. But what we actually really need to do is go through each one of our songs and basically as we add our repeat clips and we add our guide cues and dynamic guide cues clips, we should add into that this add locators clip thing. And again, you save that song and it's ready to go. Okay, but let me show you how this works. So if I press play now and just let this song play for just a moment, and I'm going to turn off my stems so we don't hear any music. What you'll see is as I hit these clips, um, it's going to add locators. Now this song is painfully slow at 83 BPM. I don't want to wait, you know, seven minutes for this song to go through for all of these to get added. So here's what I personally do. I add add locator clips to all of my songs. Okay, so everything's you know ready to go individually, and that's saved with my individual song files. Um, and then I build my set, bring everything together, get all my songs loaded. And then I do this. I go to each individual song and I change the tempo here with the tempo track from whatever it originally is. So I'll take it from lead to follow. And then I'll take this up to say 800 BPM. I'll press enter. Then I'll go back from follow to lead. Okay. So we just took that song that was seven minutes and it's now 32 seconds long. So now let me delete these locators. And let's sit back and watch what happens. I'm going to just let this roll for about 30 seconds so you can see the whole process. And we're going to hear the click go crazy, but here we go. Okay, so it sounds like everything is falling apart. Uh, but what you can see is happening is as we get to a new song section, we're adding locators in. Now, one thing I will mention you saw happen with that one. Um, sometimes, as if you increase the tempo too quickly, 
or these happen too fast or your computer's running slow kind of like mine is what you may see is that some of these locators get placed you know in the incorrect place so one of those previous first ones wasn't right on wasn't perfect we can always go back and fix that really quickly you know take a minute to add all these in and then just glance over it make sure they're in the right place uh, and you'll be good to go so let's let this run for another about 10 seconds as all these go in uh, I'll talk about where I place the clip and then uh, show you how to fix any that get messed up I think a few at the end there will probably get messed up because they happen so quickly one after the, uh, the other but let's see all right we're almost there you can see my computer spazzing out oh yep so that one got messed up that one got messed up and I bet this one will get messed up okay all right so let's stop now let's change our tempo back before we get forget back to 83 I'm going to go from lead to follow back to lead. Okay. Now I just want to look at the ones that are off again. I think the reason they get off is because they're hitting too quickly. Um, and if your computer kind of uh, locks up or freezes for any reason, then they'll get off slightly. And then there's one more back over here. This first. Okay. That one got off. So we'll add this in, uh, move that over, but you can see all these are right on beat. Like they're right where they need to be. Occasionally, some of those will will fall off and kind of go crazy. Uh, but once I add those locators in um, and I just double check everything, and make sure it's good. Then what I always suggest is disable that add locator track. Um, you don't want that running while your set is running. You could even sometimes what I even do, I go so far as once I know my sets built and I'm not going to add more songs into it, um, I'll delete the add locator track because I don't need it once I've added locators, right? They're, they're already there. The work has been done, but a, a quick kind of fix is to at least, uh, uh, turn the track activator off so that that track is off. Okay. So then now with all my locators in, that's where we can do all the special sauce of repeat and dynamic guide queue and all those sorts of really fun things, uh, that we've talked about. But again, the, the cool benefit of this is that, um, Ableton did it for us. I didn't have to do the work of adding all those locators and it took 30 seconds as opposed to having to manually go in and pick probably a minute or two per song, which is great. Um, now, one other thing I just want to show, basically all I did to make this happen, let's delete this locator here. Let's delete that one and we'll manually add this in. I go into my template. Again, I'm doing this in my set. You should do this in your song, individual song. You add the add locator clip you add it right where the locator needs to be. Make sure it's unmuted. And then you just press play, sit back, relax, watch the magic happen. And you'll see that that locator gets added automatically. So that's one of my favorite um, big time saving tips in using Ableton Live and using uh, a virtual MIDI driver to automatically add our locators for us in our set.